when Polycarp was brought before the proconsul. The proconsul asked if he were Polycarp. And when he confessed that he was, the proconsul tried to persuade him to recant his faith, saying, Have respect for your age, and other such things as they are accustomed to say. Swear by the genius of Caesar. Repent. Say, away with the atheists. So Polycarp solemnly looked at the whole crowd of lawless heathen who were in the stadium. He motioned towards them with his hand and then, groaning as he looked up to the heavens, he said, away with these atheists. But when the magistrate persisted and said, swear the oath and I will release you, revile Christ, Polycarp replied, for 86 years I have been his servant and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? Welcome to a new episode of Ancient Texts and Traditions. This week we're looking at Polycarp, Bishop, Martyr, Destroyer of the Gods. The story of Polycarp is a tale of courage, faith, and resilience in the face of persecution. His life and legacy remain an inspiration to many even 2,000 years later. Polycarp of Smyrna was a Christian bishop and martyr who lived in the 2nd century AD. He's known for several things, including his letter to the Philippians, which is one of the earliest surviving Christian writings outside of the New Testament. Then there is the celebrated account of his martyrdom that took place in Smyrna in 155. Polycarp's life, teachings and martyrdom uh, provide important insights into the history of early Christianity and into the beliefs and devotion of the early church. But beyond that, Polycarp is one of the most famous, celebrated and glorious martyrs of the church. And his courage and faith to the point of defiance continues to be commemorated to this very day. So who was Polycarp? Who was this bishop, theologian, martyr, the one they called the destroyer of the gods in Smyrna? Well, Polycarp was born in the city of Smyrna, that's modern day Izmir in Turkey, probably sometime around 69 AD. According to tradition, he was a disciple of the Apostle John, putting him at the center of a living chain of tradition that connects that earliest apostolic generation with the proto-Orthodox churches of the second century. In addition, Polycarp was known to other Christian leaders of the time as well, such as the bishop and martyr Ignatius of Antioch. One of Polycarp's students was Irenaeus, who would later become a bishop in Lyon in Gaul in modern day France. Uh, Polycarp at some point in his life was made a bishop of the Christian community in Smyrna. Uh, he served in that role for many years, becoming a influential and respected leader throughout the Christian world in the Eastern Mediterranean. Polycarp is remembered for one particular letter he wrote. His letter to the Philippians is a short but powerful text uh, composed probably sometime around 140 AD. It's addressed to the church in Philippi in uh, Macedonia in northern Greece, and it contains a number of exhortations and encouragements for the believers there. The letter emphasizes the importance of living a virtuous life, following the example of Christ and remaining steadfast in the face of persecutions and trials. It also deals with an unscrupulous character by the name of Valens, a former presbyter who, with his wife, possibly pilfered some of the church's finances. The letter also warns about the dangers of the heresy of docetism. That's the view that teaches that Jesus did not have a real physical body. 
Uh, interesting too in this letter is the way that Polycarp uh, appears to allude to and refer to the Gospel of Matthew in several places, also to several of Paul's letters, uh, in particular 1 Corinthians and Ephesians, and other texts as well, such as 1 Peter. Uh, Polycarp, it would seem, is one of the earliest witnesses to a Pauline letter collection. Uh, there's also the mention of Polycarp sending the Philippians a collection of the letters of Bishop Ignatius. But above all, Polycarp's letter to the Philippians is concerned with living an upright life for the Lord. It's a, a letter, an important letter, with a lot of very strong ethical imperatives. You know, I rather like how the letter begins. In, 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 in chapter 1, it, it, it sums up the feel of the letter. This is what Polycarp writes. I greatly rejoice with you in our Lord Jesus Christ, because your firmly rooted faith, renowned from the earliest time, still perseveres and bears fruit to our Lord Jesus Christ, who endured for our sins, facing even death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pangs of Hades. Though you have not seen him, you believe in him with an inexpressible and glorious joy, which many desire to experience, knowing that, by grace you have been saved, not because of works, but by the will of God through Jesus Christ. While there's some great stuff in Polycarp's letter to the Philippians, uh, Polycarp is most remembered not for his teaching or letter writing, but for his death, and in particular, his martyrdom. A text known to us as the Martyrdom of Polycarp is a written account of Polycarp's execution. It's, it's a mixture of history and hagiography, and, it, and it's a testament to the memory of Polycarp as the archetypical martyr of the church. Uh, in 155, Polycarp was arrested by the Roman authorities and brought before a man named Statius Quadratus, who was the proconsul, the governor of Smyrna. Uh, the proconsul urged Polycarp to renounce his faith and swear allegiance to the emperor. But Polycarp refused, declaring those memorable words, those riveting words. And this is, you know, my favorite quote from the entire document. He says this, For 86 years I have been his servant, and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? Polycarp was brought to the governor at the arena, where they were obviously having games, festivals, dealing with some uh, unwanted people in society. And while he's there, the, the, the crowd made up of Jews and Gentiles are, are calling for his death. They're, they're baiting for his blood. They're labeling him an impious teacher, saying he's the father of the Christians, one who teaches the people not to worship the gods. They even call him by the, the infamous derogatory term, the, the destroyer of the gods. But despite the threats that the proconsul made against him to renounce his faith or be subject to death by fire, Polycarp remained faithful, and even, even when he was tied to the pyre. That's where he offered this uh, you know, very, very memorable prayer with these words. O Lord God Almighty, Father of your beloved and blessed Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received knowledge of you, the God of angels and powers and of all creation and of the whole race of the righteous who live in your presence. I bless you because you have considered me worthy of this day and hour that I might receive a place among the number of martyrs in the cup of your Christ to the resurrection to eternal life, both of soul and of body, to the incorruptibility of the Holy Spirit. May I be received among them in your presence today as a rich and acceptable sacrifice, as you have prepared and revealed beforehand and have now accomplished, you who are the undeceiving and true God. If there's anything we can take away from these texts, from the letter of Polycarp to the Philippians, as well as the account of his martyrdom, I, I think it would be this. It would be, first, uh, righteousness is a way of life in Christ. I mean, this is very much stressed in Polycarp's letter to the Philippians, the importance of virtue, right behavior, and doing good before others. Second, uh, martyrdom according to the gospel and according to the will of God. 
according to Polycarp, you shouldn't seek martyrdom because people who seek martyrdom very often, when, when it really comes down to it, uh, then recant their faith in the end and prove to be cowardly rather than faithful. Uh, you shouldn't seek martyrdom, but if martyrdom is thrust upon you, you should be confident that God will strengthen you uh, if you have to go through its trial and its ordeal. Third, there is also a big emphasis on Jesus as king. You know, it's stated at the time of uh, the martyrdom of Polycarp that there was a guy called Herod who was the police chief. Uh, Philip was the local high priest of the imperial cult. That's the, the temples and the priesthoods where they paid homage and uh, religious devotion to the emperor. And Statius Quadratus was the proconsul. But it adds that Jesus was king forever. So for all the governing authorities, there are emperors, priests, magistrates, police officers. They're nothing compared to the kingly power of Christ. Fourth, what both documents have in common, uh, the letter and the, the account of Polycarp's martyrdom, is the importance of the imitation of Christ. The martyrdom ends with the statement that Christians worship the Son of God, but they love and commemorate the martyrs as disciples and imitators of the Lord, so that others too may become partners and fellow disciples with them. So there you have it. There's a brief overview of who Polycarp was, his letter to the Philippians, and the martyrdom of Polycarp too. Great texts worth reading, worth studying, and worth sharing with all of your friends. I'm Mike Bird, and you've been watching Ancient Texts and Traditions. If you like this video, feel free to check out some of the other ones on the channel. You can also subscribe, share, tell your friends about it. Also, if you're interested in this type of material, you may also like my book, Jesus Among the Gods, published by Baylor University Press. That's a volume where I explore the meaning of Jesus's divinity. There are different ways of being divine in the ancient world. So when the early church called Jesus God, what did they mean by that? It wasn't necessarily self-evident. And if you know anything about the history of Christianity, the precise sense in which Jesus was divine was a matter of debate for some centuries. So check out that book if you want to know more. Otherwise, I hope to see you around the channel and I'll see you on the next video for Ancient Texts and Traditions.